is rolling in three, two, one. Everyone sound revival! Shake the nation! Come on, shout to the Lord if you believe that. Amen! Deep inside me is calling out to the deep in him. I mean the deep in me is calling out for mega power. For mega grace. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you today. Lord, we honor you for the word. We thank you for the anointing and the move of the spirit in this house. Lord, even now tonight, we just take the restraints off of you tonight. Lord, there's nothing you can't speak to us about. There's nothing to you that, that you cannot point out. There's nothing you cannot challenge us with. And Lord, we just want to say tonight that the sky is the limit. Lord, just take us all to the next level, we ask tonight. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Well, in the book of Acts chapter 2, the Word of God says this. In verse 17, very well-known section of scriptures. Actually, verse 16 says, But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit uh, uh, in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming and great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested. Now that's not a good word. It actually should be commended commended where we get the word recommended of man commended by God to you by miracles wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know amen and so now here we see on the subject of signs and wonders here tonight we see that in this section of scriptures as as uh, Peter is quoting the prophet Joel, as he's quoting the prophet, he's telling something that very, very interesting the Holy Spirit brought back out to my heart even tonight about how the Lord constantly says throughout here, I will, I will, I will. Then he says, you will, you will, right? He says, I will pour out, you will prophesy. Are you with me? I will pour out and you will do signs and wonders. In other words, he's saying what he'll do and then he's saying what you and I are going to do. Are you with me? And so here he brings that point out again and again. He says in verse 17, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He says in verse 18, I will pour out my spirit in those days and then they shall prophesy. And he says it again. He says, and I will show wonders in the heavens above. Uh, and he says this, and he says, and signs in the earth beneath. Yeah. Now, on the one hand, uh, some years ago, uh, let, me, let me just tell you this. This is kind of my journey. 1982, the summer of 1982, I was a heathen, a young teenage heathen, and living for the world, living for the flesh. And in so doing, a Bible study came to my town. There was no Bible-believing church in my town. But somebody started a Bible study for teenagers. And the word uh, of God was preached that night, and the gift of faith fell on the man of God, and the gift of faith fell on him, and he said, I dare you to pray for seven days for the worst sinner in your high school. In seven days, he'll be saved. When he said those words, power of God hit the place, everybody began to unanimously pray for me. <laughs> That's both good and bad, you know what I'm saying? And so for those days, that was on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I was in another town getting in trouble with my friends as always. And on that Saturday night, a young man from the Bible study saw me and he walked up to me walking across the street and we met at the dotted yellow line in the middle of the street. And as he walked up to me, he stuck his hand out to me. He was a brand new Christian, just filled with the Holy Spirit. He didn't know the Romans road. He didn't know how to witness nothing. But he stuck his hand out to me. He said, Tom, you're going to hell. Pray this prayer. That was it, brother. I mean, I just got hit with the, the hammer of the Holy Spirit. 
And right there, the power of God hit me in the top of the head. And I felt like liquid hot honey burning through my body, going right out my fingertips, right out into the ground. And my body began to tremble under the glory of God, standing on the dotted yellow line in the middle of a street. I went home that night, and I went home, I was rubbing my arms like this. I said, that guy did something to me. And I went home that night, and no preacher told me to do this, but I went home that night, I destroyed all the wicked pictures off my walls. I broke up all my ungodly music. I broke off all my ungodly relationships. The Holy Ghost. I said, the Holy Ghost. I said, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost inside of me told me to, to separate myself because God says, I will walk in them. I will dwell in them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people. And so what ended up happening is I broke from all of that. In, in, in uh, 83, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and went on to Bible school. And, and uh, thank God I got out of Bible school, <laughs> that particular Bible school. <laughs> it was actually the hand of God that got me out. Thank the Lord. But anyways, I, I went and I was called in the full-time ministry. And I stepped into the full-time ministry in 1986. Became a youth pastor, an associate pastor. Eventually pioneered my own church as a young man. And then in 1993, I went to a Kenneth Hagin meeting and the glory of God fell on me and the anointing to pastor left me like a bird. And the Lord said to me, he says, you'll transition in your next phase of ministry from this place. And so I transitioned in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Rama Bible Training Center and I transitioned to become an evangelist. And as I did, the glory of God fell in my life in 96, my first experience ever of revival. And that all of heaven broke in my heart, and I began to laugh in the Holy Ghost for about two days. I got hit with the joy. How many of you ever been hit with the joy? I was so drunk in the spirit, I couldn't even hardly drive home. Amen. And so what ended up happening is, is I, was, I became so passionately hungry for revival. I began on this hungry journey for revival. And in, in 1997 uh, uh, rolls around, 1998 rolls around. And so in 1998, I had another visitation of the Spirit of God, and I stepped into another level. Everyone say another level. So tonight, if I want to call this anything else, I want to call this another level. Is that all right? How many of you want to take it to the next level? Amen. And so I, I went, and I was stirred for another level in 1998. And the glory of God hit me in a particular place. I had heard about the revival in Toronto. I had heard about the revival in Pensacola. And I had heard about the revival in Smithton, Missouri. And so and during this time, the power of God hit me in such a way where the fire of God burned through my body for about four days. And so for four days, I wept nonstop as the glory of God burned through my body. And I saw Overnight, I saw an increase of miracles take place in my ministry. And I began to minister along this lines of signs and wonders and miracles. And as I did, even amongst my revival friends, I was very, very different and I stood out. That's why I love this man. But anyways, so I, I went, and it was very strange. And so in 1998, 99, I had a number of people who had been much more in the river longer than me, Pastor Al. I, they'd been in the river for many years, and they told me, you're emphasizing too much on signs and wonders and miracles. In January of, uh, I believe it was 2000, but it could be 99. January of 99 or 2000, I don't remember which year, I had a dream. And the Lord spoke to me on this dream. And in this dream, this man, this man of God, comes to me by the name of John Wimber. And John Wimber, if you know anything of him, he had a revival that broke in 1979 in Southern California of the Vineyard. And it was a revival of signs and wonders and miracles. Their church went from 200 members to 5,800 in 13 months. In 13 months, they went from 200 to 5,800 overnight by a revival of signs and wonders and miracles. And so I knew that, and I'd followed his ministry through the years. And so as he comes to me on my dream, the Lord Jesus sent him in my dream. Now, he had already died and already gone to heaven. And as he had come to me in the dream, he appeared to me, and he said, Brother Tom, he said, the Lord has sent me to tell you, don't back off of this subject of signs and wonders and miracles. He said, do not back off of this subject. And so I began to dive in even more. And so we began to see an increase of strange signs and wonders. Strange, odd signs and wonders. 
and miracles as well. Now, really, which kind of brings us to this, what are signs and wonders? Well, they're, they're very, very different. We see them throughout the Word. Let's, let's go over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. There's a number of places we could turn and go in and out on every side of signs and wonders. But in Hebrews chapter 2, in Hebrews chapter 2, I believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, and in the book of Hebrews, Paul says, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. Then he says, For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and every disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect? Look at your neighbor and say, Don't neglect. He says, How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Amen which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those that heard him. Verse 4, God also bearing witness with what? Both with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. So how, now according to Acts 2, it said that the Lord confirmed the ministry of Jesus by how? By signs and wonders and miracles. Here, Paul the Apostle is telling you and I, how is God going to confirm our ministry on the earth? By signs, by wonders, and by miracles. This is how God confirms the ministry. This is how the Word of God is being uh, uh, proven. I believe the next, this next wave of the Spirit of God is a move of God of signs and wonders and miracles. Unprecedented that we have ever seen. Are you with me? Right after this dream that I had from the Holy Spirit with John Wimber appearing to me. Right after that, I had gone to Canada and I had gone to Alberta. And so I was up ministering in, in, in Alberta, Canada, north of Edmonton, and ministered in this church, this Pentecostal church. And so I ministered there all week long. We had a number of miracles. We had just the glory of God fell in that place. Just powerful week of revival busted in that house. The, the final night was our miracle night. And so as we were preparing for the miracle night, unbeknownst to me that there was a lady in the church that her husband was an atheist over that entire region. And he was over some kind of, I don't know, organization for atheists over that whole region. And how many of you all know God's got your number? And so what ended up happening was she had begged him every night to come to the revival meetings. Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. Wednesday night, he finally relented and said, okay, I'll come. So they came and they sat in the last of the last row. Well, in this Pentecostal church, it's hard to describe, but they had the old time pews that ran all the way almost to the side walls. With the exception of about this much room on the sides for a person to barely get down. So it kind of forced you to walk down the middle. So that night, the place was jam-packed. I mean, packed. We had all kinds of people, miracles of all kinds. We had the deaf here. We had people that eyesight was restored. All kinds of wild stuff happened that night. Yeah. And so just the glory of God fell in such a way that the joy hit, and people were laying all over the house under the power of God. Some were up on the stage. Some were on the floor. Some were down the aisles. Some were all the way out into the hallway. It was awesome. It was awesome. And so what ended up happening was this. I had two people left to pray for. Now, I know nothing of this story of this man sitting in the back with his wife. I'm, I have to pray for an elderly lady standing right here in front of me. And one person left is a young teenage girl to the far, far side. And so as I go to pray for this woman, I just felt a surge of power go through me from the Spirit. I just, boom, it hit at, just in an instant. And when it did, it hit this woman But somehow it ricocheted and a weird sign and a wonder hit that teenage girl. She was picked up by the spirit and launched through the air. And she landed back about six rows back on the top of the pews and fell down in there. You heard every bone in her body pop and crack when she did. Everybody gasped and they looked at me like I knew what to do. I don't know what to do. I I didn't do that. How do I know what to do, you know? And so everybody's looking at me, they all gasp, you know, like they sucked the air out of the room and they looked at me like I knew what to do next. And so I said, well, God started it, let him finish it. So I just kept ministering, you know. So I'm still ministering to this lady. Well, this man, this atheist was a, uh, a paramedic by trade. 
And so he felt empathetic for that girl that was way over there. So he jumped up and stormed by me, walking as mad as could be. And I just thought he was just a mad board member. And uh, <laughs> another story altogether. But anyways, he walked on by and he fished down in there to get that girl. That girl, she's wedged like this in there. She's got one arm up, one arm down. She's speaking in tongues, laughing in the spirit. She could care less where we were. She's out there with Jesus, you know, in the realm of the spirit. And so as he reached down in there, he began to slap her like this on the face to see if she was conscious. And the same anointing on her jumped up and jumped on him. He went and ran back to his seat as fast as he could. I mean, he was white as a sheet. I mean, he went and the power of God hit that guy. He was born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's now the deacon of the church. Come on, give the Lord a shout tonight. Amen. But we begin to see these strange signs and wonders take place in very, very odd ways. We'd see the miracles, but then we'd see these strange and odd things that God would begin to do. People freezing in trances. We see them all through the Word. I, I mean, just think with me about, you know, Zechariah was struck dumb by the Holy Spirit for nine months. We see Herod was eaten alive by worms. We see uh, Paul was struck blind in Acts chapter 9 by the Spirit of God. We see Peter's shadow healing the sick. We see how Ezekiel was grabbed by the hair of his head and pulled into heaven. Right? We see how the Bible says that Ezekiel said, I fell on my face. And the Bible says the Spirit stood me up. I mean, we've seen people fall out, but wait till God starts standing them up. Whoa! Oh, hey. Somebody says, you know, people fall down under the power of my church. You say, hey, that's nothing. God stands them up in ours. <laughs> Amen. And so we see over and over again, we see all kinds of them. We see earthquakes during prayer meetings. We see speaking donkeys. We see Jonah and a great fish. We see a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Come on now. I mean, we see, all the, we see money in a fish's mouth. We see Joshua stopping time so he can finish his fight. We, we see angels opening prison doors. We see evangelists being translated from one, one city to another city. We see shoulders thrown to the ground, and, and, and we see fire on top of men's heads in the upper room. I mean, we were born for signs and wonders. You were born for signs and wonders. I mean, signs and wonders are normal to us. That's the next level. Look at someone say, that's the next level. I mean, that's the next level of, of strange signs and wonders. I said the way we're going to shake all of the nations of the earth is only going to be by signs and wonders and miracles. It's got to be by signs and wonders and miracles. That is the only thing that will shake the nations. Because of what the television is showing and the movies and stuff, none of those things dent people's hearts. We ministered, we ministered in New York City area right at, not too long after 9-11. Right after 9-11, right after two of our biggest buildings in our country fell to the ground. Uh -huh. And those people, many people were numb. Many people all over America were numb because they had seen so much on television. They had seen so much in the movies that it never dented their hearts. They were completely unmoved. People jumping out of these buildings on fire. Hello. Yeah. I mean, it would completely unmove them. And so what that said to me was this. The Holy Spirit said to me during that time, the only thing that will shake the nations is signs and wonders and miracles. Are you with me? That is the only thing that will shake the nations. So I began to, to uh, run a reference, and I began to, to study various different revivals of the past. Now, some of these are going to kind of shock you. So if you can't handle it, you know, you, 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 you better just deal with it, all right? <laughs> But there's all kinds of things that we see throughout the Word. We see all kinds of different people that flowed in, in, in this signs and wonders anointing. But we also see in the last 2,000 years of church history, we see the same thing. Now, I'm just going to give you a couple. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But, I mean, there was a guy by the name of St. Maurice of the Theban Legion. And you can write this down in the year 286 A.D. And this guy, what happened to him was he had 6,600 soldiers under Maximilian Caesar sent to pull down a rebellion amongst the Gauls, uh, which was north of the Alps near the Thebes. And so what happened was the emperor, emperor had sent many troops to put down the rebellion, 
but uh, they kept deserting him. And so as all these troops kept deserting the emperor, what happened was the emperor went, Maximilian went and sent this man by the name of St. Maurice and his Theban legion and sent him down to kill this other army that had deserted the king. And when they got down there to kill the army, they got down there and when, <laughs> are you ready for this? When they got down there, and this is in 286 AD, when they got down there, they saw they were their brothers in, their brothers in Christ. They said, we can't kill our brothers. And so they put down their weapons and they embraced their brothers. They said, we cannot kill you. We cannot do what our king has asked because you're our brothers in Christ. And they laid down their weapons. And so Maximilian was so angry that he sent a larger army of over 10,000 people down there to wipe all of them out for, dis for, for uh, uh, leaving him. And so when they all got down there, this army of 10,000 men ready to destroy, what St. Maurice did was this. St. Maurice turned to his army of men and all of the others that had, had uh, left and had left the other armies of Maximilian. He, they said this. They said, uh, my friends, do not fight our brothers. They said, bow your knee and allow them to kill you. And so they bowed their knee right there. They said, we'll make it easy for you. They bowed their knee so they would make it easy for them. And the army of the 10,000 came and began to cut their heads off one by one. And when they cut their heads off one by one, much to their amazement, they took the bodies, and there was a nearby river right next to where they were. They took the bodies and they threw them into the river. They threw the bodies into the river, threw the heads into the river, completely decapitated, all 6,600 plus. And in an instant, as this took place, whew, man, I feel the anointing. <laughs> These men stood up, their bodies stood up out of the river, picked up their head, and walked back up. Their bodies began to glow like a light bulb under the glory of God. And their heads began to preach the gospel to their brothers. Come on now. This is a historical fact. Their bodies were glowing like a light bulb. And their heads began to preach the gospel. The men fell with their swords. They threw down their swords, began to weep, and revival broke right then. Come on now. Everyone say next level. I mean, I could tell you of, you know, all kinds of people. I could tell you about Sadhu Sundar Singh. I could tell you about St. Francis of Assisi. He had an anointing on his life in, in uh, 1182. In 1182, St. Saint, Saint Francis of Assisi. In fact, if you go into any Catholic church and you see any statutes of him, he's always with animals. He had an anointing with animals. Are you ready for the next level? Yes. He had an anointing with animals. And there was a, a particular city that uh, a, a wolf would come and kill men. This was a massive wolf that would come and haunt this village. And he, he would kill anybody that came outside. And as this wolf would come out, anybody that would come outside, he would kill them. So it kept everyone away from the church. So they sent somebody to go get somebody that could help them. And one, one of the uh, a priests did. They sent someone to, that could help them. 1182, this happened. So they got St. Francis of Assisi, and he came to the village. And this man walked in a level of dominion. I said he walked in a level of dominion over even the animals and the fish of the sea. And he walked in without any fear, any fear of this animal. And they told him, they said, St. Francis, this is what's happening. This wolf, he's terrorizing the village. He's killing people by the dozens. What do we do? And St. Francis says, not to worry. And he walked to the edge of the woods and he called, Mr. Wolf, come. The wolf come out of the woods bowed down before him. He says, you have plagued this village. He says, you go and you repent to the head of this village right now. The wolf walked over and fell down at the feet of the head of the village and licked his feet. That dog was tamed by the Holy Ghost. I mean, that, that, uh, that wolf was tamed by the Holy Ghost. So much so after St. Francis left, that anointing stayed there. So much so he became the city pet. Everyone say next level. Next level. Let, me, let me just tell you about Joseph. I got to tell you about St. Joseph. I mean, say, this is, now if you're not ready for next level, this one's going to rock you, okay? 1603, St. Joseph of Cupertino. St. Joseph of Cupertino. 
It says, he was uh, powerfully used of God in his day, validating the message of the kingdom. This is 1603. He was powerfully, he was used powerfully in prayer and fasting. And the church, uh, uh, the Catholic church kept trying to stop the power of God from flowing in his ministry. And so they kept trying to get rid of this guy, kept trying to get rid of this guy. And so what happened was, <laughs> are you ready for the next level? Yeah. What ha- this, is a, this is a historical fact, okay? In 1603, what happened was the Catholic Church was afraid of this certain group of monks that flowed in the anointing in such power that they called them the flyers. They called them the flyers. The reason is, is when the glory of God would fall on them, anytime the name of Jesus was mentioned or if they would worship the Lord, they would lift off the ground and they would begin to fly in the air. This is honest and God true. And so what happened in 1603 was this is St. Joseph of Cupertino, he went and he was sent to this remote village, and they went and they built this church, and as they built this church, he was, they thought, we, we're going to get rid of this guy, nobody's going to hear this guy, there's nothing, no, nothing controversial, we don't want this stuff anymore, the Catholic Church said, and so what happened was they built this church, and they forgot the cross on the steeple. And it was a large cross. It was a very large cross. And it was very, very heavy. It weighed as much as a grown man. And so they said, oh, how are we going to do that? It's so high. There's no way that we can, with our technology, bring the cross up on top. St. Joseph says, hey, not to worry. Let's pray. (laughs) They bowed their heads to pray. And as they bowed their heads to pray, the fire of God fell on St. Joseph. And with one hand, he picked up that cross that weighed more than a grown man flew up in the air uh, many many feet into the higher than the ceiling and went and set the cross up on its place right in front of the whole village the whole village came out and in just one minute was born again revival hit that city are you with me strange signs and wonders that God is going to do in the land well I I remember some years ago meeting some people in when uh, Russia was communist where they talked about where an entire city had to be blocked off because the hand of the Lord fell in a prayer meeting of a group of people that were crying out for revival in their city in the underground church. And when they did, what happened was a hand appeared in the sky and began to write the sinner's prayer in the sky. Are you ready for the next level? I'm talking about, I believe that we're going to see a move of God that's going to shake nations. Where whole nations will bow their knee in a day by the very hand of God moving. Are you with me? I believe that within a day by signs and wonders. He says right here, God bears witness. Everyone say, God bears witness. How does God bear witness? With signs and wonders and miracles. God bears witness. I believe that we're going to see whole cities. We're going to see whole nations just fall out under the power of God in one time. I'm serious. I believe, I believe it. I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt. We're going to see signs in the heavens above. Come on now. Wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath. Amen. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. I believe, these, I believe God meant what he said, don't you? I believe God said what he meant. Why? Because then he ends Acts chapter 2 with what? What does he say? And then whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. The result of every time the book of Acts mentions signs and wonders, it always ends up with a harvest. There's always a harvest at the end of signs and wonders. And I'm telling you, the greatest harvest, I believe that buildings will not contain the harvest that's going to come in. I said buildings will not contain. Nations shall bow their knee in a day. I said whole nations will fall in a day. Under the very hand of God. I believe the hand of God will move. I mean, you you start seeing people flying by the Holy Ghost. Come on now, talk to me. You see somebody lift off the ground and flying and preaching the gospel. I'll tell you what, Prophet Corbis, you see him flying through the air right here. I'll tell you what, he'll get this city's attention real quick. Are you with me? You You see a man of God, you see a prophet lift off the ground and preach to you from the air? Hello. You say, well, that can't happen. Hey, it did happen. Acts chapter 1, Jesus did it. Bible says a cloud picked him up and lifted him up out of their sight. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. I said, it's going to happen again. And I believe the Lord is looking to say, who's hungry for this thing? 
I believe this Lord is saying, who is ready to raise the bar to the next level? I believe the Lord is saying, listen, who is ready to go ahead and lay aside the things of the flesh and lay aside the things of offense? Come on now. And lay aside the things of religion and tradition and just wipe the slate clean and just say, Jesus, just mess me up real good tonight. Amen. Some of you need to just say, Jesus, mess me up real good tonight. Look at somebody say, I pray that you get messed up tonight. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Marie Woodworth Edder, she was preaching one time, and as she was preaching, she said this, she said several thousand people stood on the lake banks witnessing a solemn scene. She said the meetings were conducted day and night. People climbed up in the trees to see. She said the Holy Ghost fell in my meeting like a cyclone. Men and women were being tossed as if they were in a windstorm, she said. She said they fell inside, they fell outside the meeting. She said the police stood until they were frightened. They saw the building begin to shake under like a storm by the power of God. She said hundreds were saved. People were convicted for miles around. She was called the trance evangelist. They called her the trance evangelist because she would not only freeze in trances, but anybody that came to the meetings would freeze in trances. Hello. One time she was in, I believe it was in Ohio in Ohio or Indiana, and she was ministering, and the glory of God fell, and she froze into a trance like this for three days. Didn't blink for three days. People, it, was like a, it was like a nuclear bomb hit. Boom! And people began to fall for miles and miles away. I mean, people began to fall under the power of God. People in the field, farmers were plowing, boom, fell out under the anointing. People that working in places of business, bang, fell out under the power. And the police, this is the honest to God truth, the police picked the people up, rolled them in the back of wagons, and drove them to the meeting. The police did. The police rolled them out like logs out of the, out of the, of the wagons, roll them out, roll them out. They'd hit the ground, boom, they'd come out of the trance, they'd say, where am I? The police would say, you got to come into this meeting and hear this woman preach. Thousands were saved. William Branham flowed in such an anointing that he couldn't wear his watch anymore to the meetings because the power would flow through him so much it would blow up his watch while he was preaching. John G. Lake flowed in such an anointing that whenever he laid hands on people, in fact, well, let me just say it like this. He couldn't greet people at the door anymore because as they'd come in, he'd say, hello, so glad to see you. The power would hit them. They'd fall out into the power right there. There'd be a stack of bodies this high at the front door. Couldn't get into the church. In fact, it was said in the latter part of his ministry that when he'd laid hands on people, there was a burn mark of a handprint into their back. His handprint would burn into your body wherever he put his hand. I'm telling you what, there's another level. I said, eye has not seen, ear has not even heard the things that God has prepared for them who love him. Amen? I'm telling you what, God has got some things. He's got, he's got his ace. He's got his ace behind him. He hasn't even pulled his, he hasn't even shown his hand yet. You haven't even seen his hand yet. He just, he just moved his finger and, and we see miracle signs and wonders. The Lord says, I, I, haven't even, I haven't even pulled it out yet. I haven't pulled my hand out yet. I've just waved my finger. Look into Acts chapter 4, quickly, quickly. Acts chapter 4. Glory to God. Acts chapter 4. Look at somebody say, I'm hungry for the next level. In Acts chapter 4. Woo, man, I can feel it. No, <laughs> woo. <laughs> I get a little happy here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> woo. <laughs> I can't feel my legs right now. <laughs> I know they're down there. I just can't feel them. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. <laughs> woo. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. Woo. <laughs> Verse 29. Now, Lord, now the church is at prayer. They're in persecution. So the church goes to prayer. And it says, now, Lord, look on their threats. Grant to your servants that with all boldness, we're going to preach your word. Amen. Amen. They didn't back down. Look at somebody say, don't back down. <laughs> Verse 30 says, by stretching out your hand to heal. And that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. 
And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, they, were, they were filled. Uh, they, they, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now all the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone possess the th things of his own but they had all things in common but i'm trying to get to verse 33 now look at verse 33 and with great power great power great power, great power. Great power. now that's the greek word mega mega power look at someone say mega power and with mega power the, the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and mega grace come on now mega grace was upon them all I said, mega grace was upon them all. Amen. And so even now tonight, I'm telling you tonight, I'm, I'm hungry for the next level. I thank God for what he did before. I thank God for what he did before. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the anointing. I'm thankful for the touch of God in 96. I'm thankful for the touch of God in 98. I'm thankful for those. That, I'm telling you what, I'm groaning. I've got a groaning in my belly. Deep inside me is calling out to the deep in him. I said the deep in me is calling out to the deep in him. Come on now. I mean the deep in me is calling out. Calling out. Calling out for mega power. For mega grace. Mega power. Mega grace. Mega power. Mega grace. Come on, shout now to the Lord. Mega power. Everybody say mega power. Everyone say mega grace. If you're hungry for the next level tonight. How many of you are hungry for the next level? Come on, let me see. I, I want to see hungry people. If you're hungry for the next level, run down here right now. Come on. Come on down here. Quick, 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 quick. Run on up here right now. You're hungry for the next level. Susie, would you come? I mean, some people may fly home tonight. Some of you may just fly home tonight. Uh, yeah, and prophet, yeah, yeah, amen. You want, oh, okay, amen, amen. Could I get the, uh, somebody to help me on the keys or some kind of music or something? Amen, hallelujah. Everyone say mega power. Come on, say mega grace. Mega power. Mega grace. Our Lord, we want more tonight. We want more tonight. We want more tonight. We're not satisfied. We're not satisfied. We're not satisfied. We're not satisfied. God, grant that signs and wonders. Grant that signs and wonders. Grant signs and wonders tonight. I mean, some of you tonight, you might get stuck in a trance tonight. Some of you tonight, I mean, I'm telling you what, God's going to do some rowdy stuff in this house tonight. God's going to do something rowdy with you tonight. And so just lift your hands right now. As you do, the glory of God falls on you right now all over this house. Father, right now, release a mega grace. Release a mega anointing. Release a mega power right now, Father. Release mega power. Mega grace, Lord. Right now, release it. Release it in this house. Release it, Lord, for signs and wonders in miracles tonight. Signs and wonders in miracles. God, we're desperate. God, we're desperate. God, we're desperate. I'm desperate for you, Lord. Ha! Ah, like that song, uh, Breathe. You guys know that song? This is the Breathe. Jesus, we're hungry. Come on, get hungry. Get hungry. Get hungry. Get hungry. Get hungry. Get hungry. Get desperate. Get desperate. Get desperate tonight. Get desperate tonight. Get heaven's attention tonight. Get heaven's attention tonight. Get heaven's attention tonight. Furando, si brinda, mandinda, manandero suva, bambrore. Lord, we're desperate for you tonight, God. Do something new. Do something radical in us tonight. Father, right now, we release. We release. Go ahead. Release it. Release it. Father, right now, touch, 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 touch. Ah, fire, 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 fire. Fresh impartation, 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 impartation tonight, impartation tonight. Holy chaos, Lord. 
more. Mama, Mambuba, Mambuba. There it is. 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 Oh! Baba Babara. Baba Babara. Baba Bamingo. Mama Way Mamando. Next level. Next level. Next level. Oh! Oh! Ha! Hey! There it is. Take it. Fire. Fire. More. More, Lord. Take it next level. God, we're hungry for you. 